Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Wonderful Sunday. I'm sure you're having an awesome time. Pastor Anup and Pastor Joji are doing great stuff. But um, I'm so impressed. These young men are continuing. They are not giving up. So enjoy. You'll have a blast. Hallelujah. Welcome you in the mighty name of Jesus. Good morning to everybody. You know, I believe that you're having a good time waiting upon the Lord, seeking His face, using this time of lockdown as an opportunity to seek God, seek His face, and spend time to be built up in the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, preparation times are never wasted time. Hallelujah. It would always propel you in the plan and direction of God. Hallelujah. So, you know, I want to thank God for this opportunity, uh, you know, to come here and share, you know, and, and spend time with you through this media. And I'm, so, you know, I'm so grateful to God that we could still get connected, use this media and or medium, hallelujah, to preach the gospel, to teach, hallelujah. And aren't you glad that, you know, we can still be hooked up and be listening to the plan of God? Amen. I want to thank God for my pastors, uh, you know, through whom, you know, my life has been affected and influenced. Hallelujah. You know, whether you like it or not, you know, there, there is always an influence in your life. Make sure you are being influenced by the right person and the right direction. Hallelujah. You know, so we all need to be influenced by heaven. Hallelujah. That's when our lives moves in the direction and in the purposes of God. Hallelujah. So also I want to take this time and wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, aunt, you know, we want to thank God for all the fathers in our church. And uh, praise God, you know, let's try to be more and more be like our Heavenly Father. And I also want to thank God for our pastor. Uh, you know, who has a father's heart towards us. And, uh, you know, I want to thank God for our pastor. Amen. Praise God, Pastor Michael and Pastor Chitra are like parents to us. And, uh, you know, thank God for them. And also, you know, let's remember our Heavenly Father today. Amen. Let's enjoy Him, you know, as we, uh, you know, the remaining time that we are here on the earth, let's try spend time to seek Him, to know Him more and more through the Word and through the Holy Ghost. Amen. So, you know, see, there's, there's no other greater joy than to know your Heavenly Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus enjoyed such fellowship and communion with the Heavenly Father that He was so secure in His love. He was so secure in knowing His Father. Amen. You know, so our security and our stability in these times comes by knowing that Father. Hallelujah. So, Ummah to our great Father. Hallelujah. Our Heavenly Father. You know, let's just believe God and what He has for us today. That we will be able to hear by the inspiration of His Spirit in our midst. Amen. So, let's believe. Can, can you believe with me together that we'll be able to hear and receive what heaven has for us today. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Rabba Shikara Rabaka. Thank you. Thank you, thank you that you are our Father. Oh, we praise you and worship you that you are our precious Father. We thank you, Jesus, for giving us the Father. Hallelujah, for revealing the Father to us. Hallelujah, thank you, Father, that through Jesus we have such access to your heart, to your throne. Hallelujah, to know you. And we worship you, precious Holy Spirit, for revealing and opening the word to us in the name of Jesus. Father, we worship you, O oh, the God of all comfort, the Father of mercies, we worship you. O oh, hallelujah, we rest in your love, we rest in your care, hallelujah, we humble ourselves under your mighty hand. We thank you, Father, speak to us today, help us to hear today, in the name of Jesus, amen. Woo, hallelujah, amen, praise God. So, you know, let's open up our Bibles to, uh, you know, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 3. Hallelujah. You know, are you excited about this verse? <laughs> you know, I'm so excited because, you know, there's such revelation uh, about the Father in these verses. Hallelujah. It says, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, see, Jesus, when he, Jesus rose from the dead, you know, he's, he told, go and tell my brethren, I'm going to your fa my father and your father, to my God and your God. Wow. Hallelujah. We have come into the family. We have a father, the great father. Hallelujah. The Abba. Hallelujah. He's, he's, he's the almighty. Hallelujah. He's the mighty one. Oh, glory to God. Amen. So we belong to a family. Uh, you know, so though we don't see him, though we don't even touch him with our natural, uh, you know, body or senses, with our heart, we can touch him. With our spirits, we can know him. With our spirits, we can commune with him. Hallelujah. With our spirit, we can fellowship with him and know him, have deep koinonia with him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So it's not like we, you know, he's somewhere there in the invisible place and we can never reach him. No, through faith, through the scriptures. Hallelujah. And by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We can access. Hallelujah. We can enjoy fellowship. We can enjoy communion with the Father and with our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So he says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. You know, uh, let's hear that verse 3 in Kannada. Thank you, sister. <laughs> hallelujah. Namma kartanada yesu kristana tande agiruva devaru kanikara ulla tandeyu sakala vidavagi santaisu vatanu agiruva devarige stotra. Hallelujah. Stotra. Amen. Can we just, just give praise to the Father? Father, we just praise you. We just bless you. We just give you glory <laughs> that you are our Father, that you are our God. Hallelujah. We thank you for your tender love, the tender love of the Father, the tender care of the Father to us today. Thank you for meeting needs today. Thank you for healing bodies today. Thank you for setting minds free today. Thank you for directions today, Father. Oh, from your care, from your affection, we worship you. Oh, we praise you. Oh, we give you glory. We give you honor in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then he says, the Father of mercies. Hallelujah. So let's become more and more conscious of this Father. Hallelujah. Oh, the most powerful person. Hallelujah. Oh, the, the glorious one. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. So he says he is the father of mercy. So you come to him, expect mercy from him. Hallelujah. Mercy means even if you have missed it, you can come and receive. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are not perfect, but mercy takes care of it. Hallelujah. And he says, I am full of it. Psalms, in the book of Psalms, it says he, he is full of compassion. Hallelujah. Oh, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Oh, praise God. He is full of it. So when he's full of it, he just wants you to come and partake of what he's full of. His heart is yearning. His heart is yearning for you to come and take mercy from him. Hallelujah. So let's come boldly to the throne of God and receive mercy today. Hallelujah. Receive direction today. Hallelujah. Whatever that you are believing for, you know, the mercy of God can handle that. Hallelujah. So here it says, the father of mercies. That means Jesus must be a big mercy. Hallelujah. And here it says the father of mercy. That means not just uh, one mercy. There's multiple mercies. Hallelujah. And then it says, and the God of all comfort. Wow. Wow. Hallelujah. So you come to God. Guess what you're going to, what you're going to uh, face? You're going to face the mercy of God. And you're going to face and enjoy the comfort. Hallelujah. So if you have not been enjoying that in your presence, in his presence, throw away every other thinking. Hallelujah. And come to him and receive mercy. Hallelujah. Come to him and receive the comfort. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The comfort of God will empower you. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know about you. Whenever I, whenever I rest properly and I'm, when I'm really comforted, I can think clearly. I can be sensitive to God better. Hallelujah. Than being, uh, being in unrest. Hallelujah. Being so worried and being anxious and doing, trying to do this, that and the other. Instead of doing all those things, when I come and in, into the presence of God and receive comfort, Hallelujah. You know, I, I settle down. <laughs> Hallelujah. I take my true place. Hallelujah. On the earth. Hallelujah. So praise God. So you have to come to the throne of God and receive the comfort of God. Receive the tender mercies of God each day. The Bible says, you know, he's so full of it. And he says his mercies are new every morning. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. His mercies are new every morning. Oh, fresh mercies every day. Fresh mercies every day. So come boldly, hope in that mercy, expect in that mercy, and trust God and say, Lord, satisfy me early today with your mercy, that I'll be glad all this day. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you are like a, like a Bible says, you, you, you are like a green olive tree. Hallelujah. In the house of the Lord, trusting in the mercy of God forever and ever. Hallelujah. Amen. So, you know, these are some of the major things about God, that He is so rich in mercy. And to know Him and know His mercy is, is, is a comfort to your heart. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. So here it says, the God of all comfort. And verse 4 says, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Oh, glory to God. That is a lot of comfort in one verse. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. A lot of comfort. That means if I could camp on that verse... Guess what I, what's going to happen to me? I'm going to be enjoying some comfort. Instead of whatever is going around me, hallelujah, I'm going to be so comforted in God. Hallelujah. And, I, and because of that comfort, I'm going to have experiences in God. And because of that experience, others are going to be now influenced or be comforted by the comfort that I have received of God. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So to be comforted is to be empowered. Amen. See, when you are comforted, that's when truly you can minister comfort to others. Amen. If I am not comforted, how can I minister comfort to somebody else? who's going through challenges, who's going through troubles. You know, the Amplified Bible says, you know, that, that verse 4, it says, uh, you know, in every trouble and calamity and affliction. The God who comforts us in every trouble, calamity and affliction. Hallelujah. So there is comfort in the midst of the challenge, in the midst of the trouble, in the midst of the nonsense that's going around. There is a door that is open. Hallelujah. There is a place that is available for you. And that is a place of comfort. Hallelujah. That is a place of encouragement. That is a place of consolation that comes to us. Hallelujah. So why, why sit at a place lower than your inheritance? Come up and receive the comfort of God. Come boldly. Come boldly. What is it that is holding you back? Hallelujah. Look at the blood of the sprinkling. Hallelujah. And, 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 and deal with that. And come boldly and receive the mercy. And receive the comfort of God so that you can, be, you can have experience. Hallelujah. Amen. So whether we appreciate it or not, the way you are comforted is the way you are going to minister comfort to other people. Your victory is going to encourage others to stand. Your triumph and your victory and your standing and the experience that you're going to receive based upon that is going to encourage other people to stand. Amen. Hallelujah. So we 
you may not think much about if you may not be thinking much about you but in heaven's perspective you are an influential person there are people who are influenced by you there are people who look up to you hallelujah there are things around you hallelujah that are influenced by you amen and the way you stand and the way you receive comfort in your challenges is going to determine how you're going to minister comfort to them you may not be even saying anything your life would just become a comfort to others the way you stand the way you receive the way you move in the things of god is going to minister comfort to other people hallelujah so let's hear verse 4 also in kannada namage sambhavisuva ella sankatagalalli namage sambhavisuva ella sankatagalalli aatanu nammannu santaisuttane hige devarinda namagaguva aadaraneya moolaka naavu naana vidavada sankatagalalli iruvavarannu santaisuvadakke shaktaraguttive hallelujah amen so the way you overcome is going to influence the other person amen hallelujah the way you receive the victory the way you receive the comfort in that situation in that challenge hallelujah is going to help you now to minister that same comfort to somebody else who's going through same trouble hallelujah that also means if i would quit in the midst of that challenges hallelujah if i give up and i say it's not going to work that is going to hurt some people hallelujah that is going to not that is, though it's influencing others is not going to encourage them to stand so you can you see a higher perspective from heaven so the devil will throw things at you to quit hallelujah the challenges will come to you to quit and give up hallelujah and feel desperate and say nobody is there um it's enough for me i uh, you know throw it away hallelujah why so that you will not be influencing them in the right direction so that you will not influence another person to draw comfort from heaven hallelujah amen so when we receive the comfort of god in our, in the midst of the troubles in the midst of the tribulations and challenges hallelujah and enjoy the victory in that situation hallelujah we can minister that comfort to other people hallelujah whether we like it or not every good thing that we have received from the lord is for us to share with somebody else amen every good thing that we have received from the lord is for us to share with somebody else hallelujah so the comfort that we are receiving is for us to share with somebody else amen the only time you find it hard to share is when you have worked for it Hallelujah when you are toiling for something and received it when you lo- when you dependent on your own strength and on your own struggle to make it happen that's the time you will find it difficult to share but when you're receiving things from the lord freely through his great mercy hallelujah he ministered comfort to you it is so easy for you to share now <laughs> hallelujah can you see where he has called us to live in He didn't call us to live by our own sweat. Hallelujah. He didn't call us to do things by our own uh, strength and ability. He called us to live by his ability, by his strength, to depend on him, to draw from him. Hallelujah. Because he is the source of all things. He is the source of all things. Hallelujah Bible calls Bible says about you know the book of Genesis about the name of God as El Shaddai El Shaddai Hallelujah it means the full breast God Hallelujah meaning uh, bringing out a meaning that how uh, for a suckling child the mother's breast is the whole nourishment and the supply for everything for that child the same way the full breast god <laughs> hallelujah he is the source and the supply of everything for us hallelujah that's why abraham said i've lifted up my hands to him you you are the only one you are the only source my eyes are upon you and you alone hallelujah oh praise god can you see that your life is in a very different way it can turn around and receive comfort in whatever that you face 
Hallelujah. That you will be encouraged in every situation. So it doesn't matter what your senses are saying. Right now, there is comfort at the throne of God. Hallelujah. Right now, there is comfort coming to you. Hallelujah. See, you know, I, God will not force the comfort on me. I need to receive that comfort. And I say, Lord, I receive today. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I receive the, your comfort right now. Hallelujah. Oh, in the midst of that pressure, I, I, I receive the comfort and I say, I'm not under pressure now. I'm under the comfort of God. Hallelujah. I'm under the heavy comfort of God. So what's going to happen when, you're, when you are enjoying the comfort of God? You will be rejoicing. You will be at rest. You're not anxious. Hallelujah. So, so like Jesus was sleeping in the midst of the storm, you will be sleeping. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the midst of the challenges, you will be resting. Because you have received comfort. Hallelujah. And through that comfort, guess what's going to happen? The power of God will be revealed. The hand of God will be revealed. Hallelujah. And you will have a testimony. Hallelujah. You will have an experience. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. So, thank God. Amen. So, it's worth, it's, it's always uh, worth to stand on your faith. In the midst of the challenges, it is worth it to stand on your faith and receive the comfort and keep moving forward. Hallelujah. So irrespective of what the devil tries to throw at you, you stand there. Hallelujah. You refuse to move. You refuse to quit. Hallelujah. You, refuse, you go to God and receive the comfort. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. These times, pressures will keep coming to you. Hallelujah. This is a time like that. You know, every day, some or the other pressure will come to you. Hallelujah. And, and it will just come on you like crazy. Because that's the climate out there. Hallelujah. Filled with fear. Filled with doubt. Filled with unbelief. Wanting to come and take over you. Hallelujah. And take you away from that place of comfort. Stand against us. Resist it in faith. Find it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And refuse to move away from your place of victory. Ref refuse to move, or give, or give any place. Hallelujah. Don't give any place for the devil. Don't give any place for the care. Don't give any place for the worry. Hallelujah. Stand your ground. Hallelujah. See the victory. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Bible says God as the unchanging God. Amen. Let's read a scripture in the book of Isaiah uh, 46, verse 9. I believe this will encourage us. It says here, remember the former things of old. Isaiah 46, verse 9 and 10. Remember the former things of God, for I am God, there is no one else. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is nobody like him. I am God, there is none like me. What an announcement. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 10 says, declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand. And I will do all my pleasure. Hallelujah. I am God. There is none like me. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Oh, praise God. Aren't you glad this is your father? Let's hear that in Canada. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has spoken it. He has declared it. And what he said will stand. Doesn't matter what's going around the earth. If he has spoken it. If you have a word that you're standing on. Surely it will come to pass. So what do you do? Maintain your tongue. Hallelujah. Maintain your heart. Maintain your tongue. Maintain your mind. Your imagination. And continue to speak what he has said. Hallelujah. And you will experience. You will enjoy. And you will eat the fruit of your words. 
Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Amen. So let's look at the life of a person. You know, I'm still excited about this person. Amen. And um, in the, let's go to the book of Joshua chapter 14. And let's look at this person, you know, who stood there. It doesn't matter what happened, how long it took. Hallelujah. He decided to stand. He decided to stay with the program. He, he didn't quit. He didn't change. He didn't alter. But he decided to stay and, and go in the course and the plan which God has put in his life. Amen. Hallelujah. He refused to quit. He refused to give up. He refused to lower the standard to which God has called him to. Amen. And here it says, Joshua chapter 14, verse 6 says, Then the children of, Israel, children of Judah came unto Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Kenesite said unto him, You know the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and you in Kadesh Barnea? Forty years old was I when Moses, the, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Oh, hallelujah. Can we hear uh, verse 6 and verse 7 in Canada? Thank you, Jesus. Yudana makkalu gilgali nalli yehoshuvana badige seri daru. Aga kenejjiyanu yefunneya maganu aada kalevanu avanige. Kadesh barneya dalli kartanu nannannu ninnannu kuritu devara manushya nada moshege helida matannu ninu balle. Kartana Sevaka Nada Moshe Udeshavanu Padati Nodalu Nananu Kadesh Barne Dinda Kaluisidaga Nanu Nalvatu Varusha Prayadavanagi Denu Nana Rudaya Dali Idda Hage Avanige Undu Matanu Tirigi Takundu Bandenu. Hallelujah. So here we can see, you know, the man called Caleb reminding Joshua about what the Lord has spoken concerning him. You know, what, what matters is what did the Lord tell you? What does the word say? Makes all the difference. Amen. And he's saying, remember what the Lord told concerning me in this place. Hallelujah. And he said, how? Let me continue to read. Hallelujah. And he said, how? When Moses sent him to spy out the land, he brought back word that was in his heart. You know, it's so important to bring out things from your heart. He didn't say, I brought back word out of my head. You know, obviously, you know, everybody went to spy out the land. They could see this, you know, they're 10 feet tall giants in that place. You know, fortified walls, fenced cities. All that he also could see. He could also see the challenges. I'm sure he will be having thoughts about it. It's not that he's going blind and then coming back. He's seeing. His senses are giving him information to his head. But he didn't allow that information to pass it into his heart. You know, you can allow fear to come from the outside into your mind and fill your mind and then it affects your heart. And that makes you say something fearful. And that will trap you. Trap your life. Hallelujah. But here Caleb, Bible says, Caleb said, I brought back word according to what was in my heart. Hallelujah. Amen. According to what was in my heart, not, not according to what is in his head. Amen. That means he, he had something else in his heart compared to the ten that went with him. Twelve of them were sent. Two of them had a very different attitude, different believing system. They, they, their thoughts and their imaginations were very different. Though challenges were coming at them, though they could feel the pressure, they, they could, the fear could come to them, and they, they, could feel, they could feel that they are nothing compared to the challenge that is before them, he refused to speak that. He refused to acknowledge that. Hallelujah. But he continued to speak what was in his heart. You know, my brother and sister, it makes all the difference if you continue to speak from your spirit rather than from your head. It makes all the difference if you continue to acknowledge and speak and be influenced by what is in your heart rather than what is in your head. Hallelujah. Amen. And eventually what is in your heart can influence your head. And you can have experience. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So here it says, he brought back word according to what was in his heart. Amen. See, the ten of them saw giants, but two of them saw victory. The ten of them were seeing the challenges, and they called things which is, which is there as it is. But the two of them saw victory. I would say two of them saw God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go oh, glory to God. Two of them saw God. Hallelujah. Two of them saw God in the midst of those giants. And they said, these giants are nothing compared to our God. Hallelujah. Ten of them forgot what all has happened. And they just looked at the things as it is and, and accepted the things as it is. But two of them, hallelujah, went with God. They saw God. They saw the victory. And they spoke the victory. Hallelujah. Amen. See, what you believe and speak changes everything. Let's continue to uh, you know, move on. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So, where is, what is your vision? How are you seeing in the midst of your challenges? Hallelujah. How are you? What do you see in the inside? Makes your life to go in that direction. As far as you can see, that's much you will receive. Hallelujah. As much victory you can imagine and, 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 and press in and thank and believe, that much of victory you can experience. Hallelujah. But if you keep thinking about the trouble, if you keep meditating about the trouble, you will be staying there. And you will be overpowered by that. Hallelujah. So we can see the people who didn't see the victory. Who saw things as it is. And, and allowed fear and doubt and unbelief to uh, you know, choke them. What happened? They all died in the wilderness. They, they didn't inherit the promised land. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me continue to read. He said, as it was in my heart, verse 8, it says, Nevertheless, the burden that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon your feet have trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord your God. Oh, glory to God. Amen. You know, does it pay to follow God fully? Does it pay to completely serve the Lord with, with your hundred percent from your heart? It's going to affect you and your children. Amen. But here the Bible says that the men that went with them, the brethren that went with him, made the heart of the brethren melt. You know, this is a very serious thing. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's not just you, now you're affecting others <laughs> with your fear, with the doubt, and with the unbelief. So these men forgot where they came from. They forgot how God has, you know, killed all the firstborn. They forgot how he parted the Red Sea and they walked on dry land. They forgot how he's, with a mighty hand and outstretched arm, they were brought out of slavery, which they could never even do it on their own strength. They forgot, hallelujah, how the Pharaoh and his chariots were, you know, drowned in the Red Sea. They forgot how the, the glory and the power of God appeared on Mount Sinai and he gave them a tablet written in his own finger. They forgot the power of God. They forgot him and his power. Hallelujah. And they are now, so, so they are now just moved by this small challenge that is in front of them. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bible says these are written as examples for us. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Let me continue to read. Hallelujah. It says, it says in the book of, uh, I mean, let me continue to verse 8. It says, nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. Amen. I wholly followed the Lord my God. And he says, Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon your feet have trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord your God. Amen. Can we hear verse 8 and 9 also in Canada? Please. 
ಆದಾಗ್ಯೂ ನನ್ನ ಸಂಗಡ ಹೋಗಿ ಬಂದ ನನ್ನ ಸಹೋದರರು ಜನರ ಹೃದಯವನ್ನು ಕರಗಿಸಿದರು ಆದರೆ ನಾನು ನನ್ನ ದೇವರಾದ ಕರ್ತನನ್ನು ಪೂರ್ಣವಾಗಿ ಹಿಂಬಾಲಿಸಿದೆನು ಆ ದಿನದಲ್ಲಿ ಮೋಶೆಯು ನನಗೆ ನೀನು ನನ್ನ ದೇವರಾದ ಕರ್ತನನ್ನು ಪೂರ್ಣ ಮನಸ್ಸಿನಿಂದ ಹಿಂಬಾಲಿಸಿದ್ದರಿಂದ ನಿನ್ನ ಕಾಲು ತುಳಿದ ದೇಶವು ನಿನಗೂ ನಿನ್ನ ಮಕ್ಕಳಿಗೂ ಎಂದೆಂದಿಗೂ ಬಾಧ್ಯತೆಯಾಗಿರುವುದು ಎಂದು ಆಣೆ ಇಟ್ಟು ಹೇಳಿದನು Amen. So we can see that these people who brought back a bad report from the of the Lord, I mean bad report to the to the people. Bible says they made the heart of their brethren melt. They were influencing them. Hallelujah. So we can see, you know, your life is always influencing somebody. Hallelujah. So, so let's see, you know, if who who influenced Caleb? So if you look at Caleb's life, you know he you know when he is right when this scripture you know is written he is now 85 years old amen this instance that we are talking about Caleb was 85 years old and bible says 40 years he was he was he was in egypt then the 40 years he was in wilderness and then the 5 years he was with joshua amen hallelujah so we can see he was born as a slave in egypt so his background conditions is not great his his parents were slaves 400 years they were slaves amen so in that lineage he is coming and and he is a slave is that is that and mom was a slave he was a slave and and he must be having tough work there hallelujah slavery is going on and probably in that time when he was born pharaoh was trying to kill the babies and he would have escaped <laughs> amen hallelujah so uh, praise god so he would have come from a rough background and then at the end of that slavery time there comes a man appointed by god to deliver them out of bondage hallelujah amen i'm sure that his life must be influenced by moses hallelujah his life must be influenced by the faith of moses hallelujah by god of moses which which challenged him to believe him and fo- follow god completely with his heart unlike his brethren who held back who drew back but he decided he must be influenced by moses he saw god through moses hallelujah he would have had some experiences hallelujah through the uh, through what he understood about god from moses which would have made him to stand which would have made him to not give up and quit but continue to stand in the midst of whatever your senses were saying hallelujah hallelujah so he must be reverencing god his power hallelujah which he were, which was displayed through moses life hallelujah praise god thank you jesus amen so god sends people into our life hallelujah where we will be influenced in the right way in the right direction so we need to reverence and 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 celebrate and receive from that gift and office bible says we should consider them and esteem them very highly and count them worthy of double honor hallelujah see how it all it's it's not just in the old it's it's there everywhere because this is god's way of doing things amen hallelujah praise god thank you jesus amen so let me continue to read joshua chapter 14 and and uh, verse you know 8 and 9 we read that he fully followed the lord he wholly followed the word means entirely amen completely amen that means it's not a part time following <laughs> hallelujah many time people think only when you're in full time you should give your heart fully to the lord <laughs> hallelujah who oh, praise god amen there is nothing like that bible says in uh, you know in the gospels he said you shall love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength i believe that's from uh, hallelujah glory to god amen mark chapter 12 verse 30 amen so with all your heart so there is no part time followers you cannot go after god with part time a, a part of it is for god and the part of it is for the world 
Amen. A part of it is for God and a part of it is for my senses. Amen. Hallelujah. No, no. Hallelujah. He says, you follow the Lord with all. Here Bible says, Caleb followed the Lord wholly, fully. Amen. Hallelujah. That means there is no space for anything else. Whether you are in full time or you are in the job, your heart must be fully for the Lord, wholly for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So means there is no space. You set the Lord apart in your life. He is the first for you. Hallelujah. Everything about him is the first in your life. Everything that he says is the first thing in your life. Hallelujah. So that's how you set the Lord in your life. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. And you need to set him like that always, every day of your life. He said, Lord, here I am. This life belongs to you. This breath belongs to you. This words belongs to you. Everything about me is yours. I'm yours. You purchased me. And here I return my life to you. Everything about me to you as an offering and a sacrifice to you. Oh, praise God. You know, it makes a lot of difference when you are in that place. Amen. Hallelujah. And here it says, he wholly followed the Lord. See, when you're wholly following the Lord, that means you completely trust him. You are dependent on him. You're not dependent on your strength. You're not dependent on your ability. You're not dependent on any background. You know, Caleb didn't have a great background to depend on. He came from slavery. Hallelujah. So he's dependent on completely on him. Whether you have a good background to depend on or not, it's not right to depend on anything except the Lord. Hallelujah. As long as we are living in this body, there was always a tendency to be doing and acting independent of the Lord. That came through the fall of man. Hallelujah. That came through the fall of Adam. And that has been instilled into our flesh. So there is a thinking that will always come to you to not depend on him. To do things independently of God. Hallelujah. So can God look and check every area of your life and speak to you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Why are you hiding it? Amen. Why do you have a compartment that where God is not even allowed to look there? Hallelujah. Praise God. Bible here says, holy follow the Lord. Break that door. And I say, Lord, every area of my life, I open to you. I welcome you. Help me. Hallelujah. I invite you. Oh, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So when you are completely dependent on him, I would say that is faith. You trust him. You rely on him. Hallelujah. Everything about you is about what he said and about his character. Everything that in your life is now hanging on what he said and on his character that he will not lie. Oh, praise God. Amen. So when Caleb went to face the challenges, hallelujah, he, he faced those walls and giants, he was dependent on God. And he wholly followed the Lord. And he said, if God has promised it, this land is ours. So he would have cast down some imaginations. And he started imagining how the Lord is there. And how the Lord has strengthened them to defeat all the giants. Hallelujah. How the Lord has equipped them to hallelujah, take over those cities. Take over that land. So when he would have walked, he would have imagined himself Walking as his place. Hallelujah. <laughs> if you follow up the story, Bible says the place that he walked on, God gave it to him. Hallelujah. To him and to his children. Oh, praise God. Amen. So does it matter? Does it, does it really affect your children the way you are standing? Does it affect the generation that is, that is coming up? The way you stand, does it influence your generation? So it's worth standing in faith. It's worth standing bold and talking tall. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So it's, it's worth it. It's worth standing tall and talking bold. Hallelujah. So it's worth it. It's going to influence the life of others. And it is going to influence your generation. And it's going to leave an inheritance for them. 
So there is always a promise connected to standing strong in the Lord. There's always a promise connected to standing bold in Him and in what He has said and not compromising on what your senses are saying, what the challenges are saying. Oh, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, maybe we can hear Mark chapter uh, 12, verse 30 in Canada. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, with all your heart. Nothing left behind. Hallelujah. With all your heart. As much as you can open, as much as you know, open it up. Fully, fully to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we're going to be going home soon. Soon we're going to be hear the trumpet call. This is the time we can make an adjustment. Hallelujah. This is the time that we can make a change here. Because once you are at the throne of Jesus, at the judgment seat of Christ, you cannot change anything. And he doesn't change his judgment. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, glory to God. So, let me continue to read from Joshua chapter 14, verse 10. He says, Now behold... The Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 40 and 5 years, ever, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now I am this day fourscore and five years old. Amen. So here he is saying, the Lord has kept me alive. Amen. So if you go back and read that instance in Numbers 14, verse 24, it says, God is telling about Caleb. He says, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him and has followed me fully, him will I bring into the land whereto he went and his seed shall possess it. Amen. Hallelujah. So you'll be amazed to see in these scriptures, in these portion of scriptures, how many times holy following the Lord is mentioned. Hallelujah. How many times following the Lord completely with everything that you have is important to, for you to persist. Important for you to please Him. Important for you to cooperate with Him. Hallelujah. And with His plan on the earth. For you and for your generation. Praise God. Hallelujah. And here we can see. Let me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So verse 10, it says, Caleb is saying, now I am 85 years old. Very interesting man. Amen. Hallelujah. 40 years he was a slave with all kinds of disadvantages. Influenced by Moses. Now comes out. Experienced the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. Came out. And now he's there another 40 years in the wilderness. Not because of something he did. Because of the brethren that doesn't want to go forward. But they wanted to go backward. Hallelujah. He's now 40 years. In the wilderness. Amen. Hallelujah. And then another five years, he's now helping Joshua, serving under Joshua, serving Joshua. What is he doing? He's helping his people to receive their inheritance. He's helping his people to receive their inheritance. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Whether we understand it or not, you know, we are here to build people up. And to help people to receive their inheritance in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's, so let me, uh, uh, let me read this verse in the book of Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. He says, Now brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. Hallelujah. So here, Apostle Paul is saying, you know, it's an amazing portion of scripture. And, you know, he has taught them. Now he says, now I commit you to God first. And then he says, I commit you to the word of his grace. You know, we have the logo always here, word of his grace. What are we doing? We are sending the word of his grace. Not a word of condemnation. It's a word of his grace, of the finished work of Jesus. Hallelujah. And the word of his grace, when received, hallelujah, will cause you to inherit something. Will cause you to make you to stand. 
to build you up hallelujah and give you an inheritance oh please praise god hallelujah so we are here just like Caleb was doing naturally in the physically, he was fighting those fights. Hallelujah. He was standing with Joshua. And what were they doing? He, they were helping people to possess their inheritance. Amen. Hallelujah. So the word of his grace will build you up, make you stand, make you stand strong in faith, and cause you to receive inheritance which the Father has completely qualified you to partake of. How does that happen? You know, the, already the inheritance is inside you. Hallelujah. Already all that the Father has is inside you. So when the, the, that is the truth, whether you accept it or not, whether you're going and looking for inheritance here and there or not, the truth is the inheritance is already inside you. That's the word of His grace. The word of His grace will tell you that you got it. It's already been given. It's completely purchased for you. It is yours now. Hallelujah. But when you receive the word of his grace, it will also cause you to stand in faith. And say, huh? I can see. Oh, this is mine. And then you will say, oh, I can see. This is also mine. Oh, I can see. This is also mine. And it will cause you to stand and partake of it. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can we hear that verse in, in Kannada also? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you back up a few verses before to verse 28, you know, here it says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves, you know, watch your life, and to all the flock, over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. For what? To feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. Amen. So we are, what, what is the key thing here? Feeding. Take oversight. And then what we have to do? Feed. Feed. Feed the sheep. Feed the flock. Whose flock? God's flock which was purchased by his own blood. Hallelujah. So, you must be careful about how you're influencing your brethren. You must be careful about what are you feeding. Amen. Hallelujah. So, here it says, the word of his grace, when it is fed, it will cause people to stand. It will cause people to stand and receive their inheritance. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, God puts such weightage on such things. You know, let's also, you know, I, I believe that we should look at this Matthew chapter 5 and verse 18 onwards. 18 and 19. Maybe we'll just look at verse 19. Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. And it says here, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men, so he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> hallelujah. Here it says, you take this word, hallelujah, and change it and alter it and turn it down or, and, and, you know, and then try to teach people that he will be called least in the kingdom of God. Oh, that's dangerous. Amen. Hallelujah. But then it says, but whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. So you can see here that anybody who teaches and does this scripture, this word, hallelujah, shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So you can see somebody is least and somebody who is called great in the kingdom of heaven. I believe this is connected to rewards. Amen. Hallelujah. When you stand before God, the people who taught and did what the word said, they're going to be great in the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Let me put it down a little more simpler. Hallelujah. Let me say, those who have learned the basic doctrines, hallelujah, and teaching them, they shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Wow. So you can see how you are going to be in the kingdom of heaven. Whether you're going to be great or you're going to be least. Hallelujah. What about the person who was taught and did nothing? You think about it. Hallelujah. It's not going to be great. 
they're not they're, going, they're not going to be called great hallelujah they were just a pawn they just received and stood there hallelujah didn't let anything out the good thing that they have received they didn't share it with their brethren they just kept it for themselves hallelujah so the comfort they received didn't flow out it didn't influence anybody the revelation that you received didn't come out from you to others and influence the life of others and and help them to follow god help them to see god nothing you just saw something so your light must be going dimmer and dimmer and dimmer hallelujah praise god amen so we can see we are here to build people up hallelujah strengthen people up help people's faith hallelujah help people's joy that they can stand and receive their inheritance hallelujah praise god glory to god amen so let's get back to joshua and maybe we can read uh, uh, i think we didn't read 519 matthew 519 also in canada ಆದರೆ ಯಾವನಾದರೂ ಈ ಆಜ್ಞೆಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಚಿಕ್ಕದಾದ ಒಂದನ್ನು ಮಾರಿ ಹಾಗೆಯೇ ಜನರಿಗೆ ಬೋಧಿಸಿದರೆ ಅವನು ಪರಲೋಕ ರಾಜ್ಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಅಲ್ಪನೆಂದು ಕರೆಯಲ್ಪಡುವನು ಯಾವನಾದರೂ ಇವುಗಳನ್ನು ಕೈಕೊಂಡು ಬೋಧಿಸಿದರೆ ಅವನೇ ಪರಲೋಕ ರಾಜ್ಯದಲ್ಲಿ ದೊಡ್ಡವನೆಂದು ಕರೆಯಲ್ಪಡುವನು Hallelujah he said now therefore give me this mountain whereof the lord spoke in that day for you heard in that day how the anakims were there and the cities were great fence so if so be the lord will be with me then i shall be able to drive them out as the lord said and joshua blessed him and gave unto caleb the son of jephune hebron for an inheritance oh glory to god hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb the son of Jephune the Kenesite unto this day because that he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel amen i think we skipped a few verses before uh, you know verse 11 Joshua chapter 14 verse 11 it says yet i as yet i am as strong this day as i was in the day Moses sent me my strength was then even so is my strength now for both for war both to go out and to come in now therefore give me this mountain hallelujah so can you see this man 85 years old you know and and uh, you know he is saying now i am strong as i was in that day so can you imagine after he is out of egypt 40 plus 5 years 40 years in the wilderness and 5 years serving joshua and helping people to receive their inheritance he is now waiting for 45 years hallelujah and he has not toned down one bit he had to continue in that place of faith when he went to see spy out the land he had to continue and maintain his heart his attitude the same way irrespective of how things were going around how the children of israel were rebelling he had to maintain that place of faith for 45 years amen so let's read from verse 11 to uh, 14 in kannada thank you jesus moshe nannannu kaluvisida divasadalli nanu hege balavagi iddeno hageye iduvaregu balavagi iddene nanu yuddakke hogi baruvadakke nanage aaga idda shaktiya hageye igalu shakti ullavanagi iddene ಆದದರಿಂದ ಕರ್ತನು ಆ ದಿವಸದಲ್ಲಿ ಹೇಳಿದ ಈ ಬೆಟ್ಟವನ್ನು ಈಗ ನನಗೆ ಕೊಡು ಯಾಕಂದರೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಅನಾಕ್ಯರು ಇದ್ದಾರೆಂದು ಗೋಡೆಗಳುಳ್ಳ ದೊಡ್ಡ ಪಟ್ಟಣಗಳುಂಟೆಂದು ನೀನು ಆ ದಿನದಲ್ಲಿ ಕೇಳಿದ್ದಿ ಕರ್ತನು ನನ್ನ ಸಂಗಡ ಇದ್ದರೆ ಕರ್ತನು ಹೇಳಿದ ಪ್ರಕಾರವೇ ನಾನು ಅವರನ್ನು ಹೊರಡಿಸಲು ಶಕ್ತನಾಗಿರುವೆನು ಅಂದನು ಆಗ ಯಹೋಶುವನು ಯಫುನ್ನೆಯ ಮಗನಾದ ಕಾಲೇಬನನ್ನು ಆಶೀರ್ವದಿಸಿ ಅವನಿಗೆ ಹೆಬ್ರೋನನ್ನು ಬಾಧ್ಯತೆಯಾಗಿ ಕೊಟ್ಟನು ಹೀಗೆಯೇ ಕೆನೆಜನಾದ ಯಫು ನನೆಯ ಮಗನಾದ ಕಾಲೇಬನು ಇಸ್ರಾಯೇಲಿನ ದೇವರಾದ ಕರ್ತನನ್ನು ಪೂರ್ಣವಾಗಿ ಹಿಂಬಾಲಿಸಿ ಆದ್ದರಿಂದ ಹೆಬ್ರೋನು ಇಂದಿನವರೆಗೂ ಅವನ ಬಾಧ್ಯತೆಯಾಯಿತು ಹಾಲೆಲೂಯಾ ಸೋ 45 ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಟು ವೇಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಆಟಿಟ್ಯೂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಫೇತ್ so can you imagine in those 45 years so many things would have happened his relatives would have passed away the people that he knew would have passed away he would even have to bury them hallelujah but he had to maintain that place that attitude refuse 
to quit, refuse to quit, refuse to give up, but continue to maintain that word which the Lord spoke concerning him, that he will inherit that place. His seed will inherit that place. He will possess it. Hallelujah. He said he will, God will bring him into that place. He didn't say he will go on his own strength. He said, God said, I will bring him into that place. And his seed will possess it. Hallelujah. So he had to stay in that place of what God has said concerning him and stay in that place which is equivalent to any challenge that you're facing. A word that you're standing on has the power, has the ability of God inside it to bring that word to pass in your life. Amen. And so he had to wait in expectation. Hallelujah. Not like, oh, okay, sometime it may happen. It may not happen. I may die off before that. Will I ever see it? No. It says, you know, he was maintaining that place, an attitude of faith, continue believing for 45 years. Wow, that's a long time. That is a long time. Hallelujah. 45 years. And, and he would have done it, I believe, one day at a time. Hallelujah. He would, have, he would have continued to follow the Lord fully. That's why he said, as my strength was in that day, it is my strength today. That means it was not his strength that day, neither is his strength today, his strength today, but it was the strength of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Amen. So that's, that's what happens when we trust in the arm of God. Hallelujah. When we trust the word of God, we are trusting the arm of God, the power of God. Hallelujah. Your faith will rest in the power that is released in his word. Hallelujah. Bible says in the book of Isaiah, let's go to chapter 40 and towards the end. I think it's good to see that this is how he would have waited. Amen. Oh, praise God. He says, let me read from verse 28. Hast, not thou, hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. Now look at verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord. So Caleb would have waited upon the Lord. He would have, how, how he would have waited upon the Lord? He would have waited upon his word. Hallelujah. He would have, they that waited upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's why his strength was the same as it was that day it is today. Because he's got some supernatural strength. Hallelujah. His strength was no longer his natural strength. His strength would have increased. Bible says, as your days, so shall your strength be. Amen. So his strength must be the Lord's strength. Hallelujah. Amen. And here it says, they that waited upon the Lord. The word wait means to expect. To look with eager expectation. That means every day he would, have, he would be expecting to possess. Every day he would be expecting what he believed. Concerning what the Lord spoke concerning him. Hallelujah. Every day he would have held on to that word and expected it to come to pass, not based on his ability, not based on his strength, not based on his perfection, but based on what God has said. Hallelujah. So that word also wait means to, to you know, it means to, hallelujah, to tie. It means to, uh, you know, to bind together. Hallelujah. Means you, you are holding on to the word and, and your life is bound to it. Hallelujah. That means you're dependent on that word. Hallelujah. You are in fellowship with that word. You, you are in communion with that word. Hallelujah. And that word is now taking you. It's no longer your strength. It's easy. So it's no longer, the, it's no longer your strength. You are now drawing something called as comfort and strength from that word that you have believed. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So he would have waited and he inherited. 
Hallelujah. And Bible goes on to say how he persists that place. That place became his. You know, that's the place where the patriarchs were buried. Hallelujah. If you go and check on Google, you will see all those details there. Amen. Hallelujah. So we can see that how he continued like that. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So I believe it is a testimony for you and for me to be influenced by Caleb. Hallelujah. Just like how Moses influenced him, we can look at his life and be influenced by him and by what God has done in his life. Hallelujah. And continue to stand in the midst of how challenging things look like. Amen. Hallelujah. And let me, uh, let me read another verse in Romans chapter 15 verse 4. But before that, let's hear Isaiah 40 verse 31 also in Canada. Ninage Gotilavo, Nino Kedalilavo, Kartanu Nirantaravada, Devaru, Bumia Antegadanu, Sushti Sidavanu, Daniva Dilla, Ilave, Badaluva Dilla, Athana Teluvarike, Parisho, the Nege Agamia. Hallelujah. Athanu Danida Vanige, Shakti and Nu, Balahin and Nige, Bahubalavanu Kodutane. Yavuvan Astaro, Danidu, Badaluvaru, Tarunaru, Sampurna Vagi, Biduvaru. Adare Kartan and Nirikshi Suvaro, Hosa Balavan Nu Hunduvaru, Avaru Hadugalante Rektigal in the Betavan Nu Eruvaru, Odi Dani Aru, Nadedu Badalaru. Hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You know, there's, there, the, you, you don't need to wait on the Lord till you, you know, reach December 30 and 31st. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can wait on the Lord today. Hallelujah. You can wait on the Lord every day of your life. You can switch off from everything else and spend some time in expectation. Hallelujah. Spend some time building your expectation. Hallelujah. You can spend some time binding that word around you, around your mind, around your emotions. Hallelujah. And, and start acting and thinking about that word. Hallelujah. You're waiting on the Lord. What's going to happen? Strength is going to rise. Hallelujah. The strength of God is going to rise in your situation. The arm of God is going to be revealed in your situation. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So wait on the Lord every day of your life. Hallelujah. Are you expecting something from God? Are you expecting what you're believing to come to pass? Hallelujah. Who are you depending on that expectation to be fulfilled? On the arm of the Lord? Or on your strength. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Romans 15 verse 4 in closing. Let's read. And for whatsoever things were written aforetime. Were written for our learning. So all these things that are written. Were written for our learning. Learning. Say learn. Hallelujah. Learning is so important for a believer. Amen. Learn means you can't be running around if you want to learn. Learning means you need to sit in one place and calm down, bring down every emotion and, and desire and to that place and say, this is most important for me. Hallelujah. Me sitting at the feet of Jesus is the most important thing in my life. Hallelujah. That's the one thing. Remember one, one thing? Hallelujah. One thing have I desired. One thing I do, forgetting those things and pressing forward. This is one of that one thing. What is that one thing? Sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening. Hallelujah. And learning. You know, thank God for, even though it's locked down and all, you know, by the goodness and the mercy of God, we are hearing the word. We are being taught. Hallelujah. We are hearing such awesome truths. You know, I'm enjoying and having a great time in God. Hallelujah. And, and I don't know whether you are, uh, you know, enjoying that. I believe you are. Amen. But no, none of us can come and force you to fully follow the Lord. Hallelujah. None of us can come, force you and say, expect, wait on God. No. These are things that you decide. These are things that you decide. Hallelujah. And desire and go after. Hallelujah. Praise God. The time that we are here, let's be hungry for him, thirsty for him. Let's press into whatever he has for us. Hallelujah. 
Time is running out. Hallelujah. Things are short. Hallelujah. Though things are crazy out there, you don't have to be moved by it. You don't have to let doubt or fear or unbelief fill your heart. Hallelujah. You need to let the word of God rise up. You need to stand your ground. You need to receive the comfort of God. Bible says these things were written a fourth time. Hallelujah. Was written for our learning. For our learning. Hallelujah. That why? So that through the patience and comfort of the scripture. See, Caleb had to wait patiently for 45 years. You know, that's something commendable. Hallelujah. 45 years in expectancy. Faithfully. Hallelujah. And, he, and when the 40 years is over, he didn't say the first time. You know, the beginning of the fifth, five years he served Joshua. But he didn't say the first time. Now give me the mountain immediately. <laughs> Everybody go and do whatever they want. He continued to serve. He continued to serve until that time came and he claimed his possession. He was bold to take hold of his possession. Hallelujah. He was bold to make, uh, make that statement and say, give me my mountain. Hallelujah. So we can see he is a very patient man. Hallelujah. And here it says, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. Oh, hallelujah. So the word of God is going to give you patience. Cause you to stand patiently by receiving the comfort. And the word of God is going to cause you to have comfort so that what's going to happen, you can continue to see that picture. You can continue to see God and what he said before you. Hallelujah. Because hope is a glad expectation of what God has said. Amen. And you can inherit it. I believe we heard something today. May, may these words encourage you and strengthen you to stand. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes it's not easy to say certain things, but I believe we needed to hear that in Jesus' name. So let's just pray and trust God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we worship you. We praise you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for your presence in our midst. Thank you, Lord, for your strength coming into your people. Thank you for your comfort today. We receive that, Lord, today in the name of Jesus through your word, through the scriptures, that we will continue to stand. We will continue to imagine. We will continue to see what you have purchased for us. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you all so much. You are blessed. Over to Pastor. Praise God. You had a wonderful time, I'm sure. You're blessed. You're fed. You're strengthened, edified. Don't forget to exercise what you're hearing. Otherwise, you just get flabby. Let's act on it. Hallelujah. Let's go to our communion table today as we meditate on the scripture. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, Romans, the fifth chapter, says in verse 10, For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. By now you know that the word saved means healed, protected, preserved, delivered, nothing missing, nothing broken, a full life, not just going to heaven. Thank God we're going to heaven. Hallelujah. But Jesus, his life is available today, praying for us today, 24 bar 7. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He shed his blood for us. In the mind of God, all this happened way before the foundations of the earth were laid. Today, we show it, we believe it, and we declare it till the day we see him face to face. The benefits of the mighty salvation are ours. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your life for us while we were without strength, while we were unable, when we were not qualified in any way. You gave your lifeblood for us. You died for us. Thank you, Lord. Your body was tortured for us. You hung on that cross for us, on the same cross. You took our sin, our sickness, and every curse. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're grateful. 
Hallelujah. Now we expect the benefits of that precious sacrifice to come to the body of Christ. Come to your people. Healing, wholeness, soundness, welfare, nothing missing, nothing broken. May we live and fulfill the plan of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we eat and drink? If you have some bread, roti, and juice with you, we shall partake. In Jesus' name, shall we eat and drink? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's amazing. All over the world, we are drinking and eating the same blood of the Lamb, body broken for all of us. The same bread, the same drink. We are one. Isn't that amazing? For centuries, people have been having that. What a body we belong to. We're blessed. You're blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's receive the offering and enjoy giving God loves a cheerful giver. So be excited about it. Act on the word of God. Even though it costs you, let it be done in faith that we may receive the benefits in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for the privilege in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, team. You're blessed.